awesome. Hey everybody, welcome to Dad Talk. Today we are live at Turning Point in Tampa, Florida. And I got Mr. Billy Primpa sitting beside me. Billy, what's up, man? Thank you very much, man. It's good to see you again, It's good brother. to see you it's too, see man. You. It's great to meet you. <laughs> So Billy, I mean, you're, you're one of the candidates that I got to sit down and talk to uh, when we went to go eat supper with Trump. How cool was that? It, it was. And then uh, we started talking about parental alienation, and it's not often I get to talk to a candidate that knows what's going on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, tell us about your experience and your knowledge with parental alienation and what that awareness means to you. Well, so with parental alienation, it's uh, for the people that don't know, it's for a parent um, deliberately keeps another another child away from another parent for various reasons. It could be for you know monetary gain. It could be because of spite. Usually, it's typically because of spite. In my case, it's spite and monetary gain. Unfortunately, um, for and many people have heard this story before. Some of them probably haven't, but you know, I when I was in the military, I was stationed in England. I, I married a woman that I met there. We came to the United States only to find out that she just wanted papers. She didn't actually want to be in the United States. And more importantly, she wanted to get pregnant to live off of the benefits in the United Kingdom and had an entire, essentially a roadmap laid out for how she was going to continue to do this, how she was going to put me on child support, how she was going to live off the government, collect the, the, the welfare benefits. Because in England, it's a little bit different than the United States. Like We think we have a problem with welfare in England. It's, 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 a, it's a way different beast. I'm talking to pay your rent, mortgage, all kinds of stuff. Um, depending on your circumstances. Now, I have two daughters. My first daughter that we had, six months into our relation, I mean, six months into the pregnancy with her, with our first daughter, I later find out on her tablet that she's having conversations with her ex-boyfriend, who she told me was in jail, never really told me too much as to what it was, but turns out this guy was a cocaine dealer. He was mewling her all across the Dominican Republic and Jamaica and all across the world to try and, and I don't know, he was doing this, you know, this drug thing. and. I find out that she's actually been communicating with this guy to try and run away back to England while my child was still in her in her stomach, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of finding out some of the things that she's saying. And um, it broke my heart, like it would with many people. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian man. I don't believe in divorce. I don't believe in, in separation. If, if we're going to, uh, you know, have a child and raise a family, I believe there's a way we can work through it. Maybe it was something that I did wrong. Maybe I wasn't the, the, the best man I could possibly be for her. Maybe and I, I, I try to come up with all the reasons as to why, you know, um, something like that would happen but we ended up going to counseling we stayed there for a little bit and then she said you know what I don't want to do counseling anymore I think things are fine and we're good and you know we, we canceled it and everything was good then you know she started getting into arguments with my family trying to alienate me from yeah. my friends started fighting with uh, my friends and family okay. yeah you know she got into a really big fight with my mother and this led to me being homeless which was not a very fun play it was not a very fun situation but she got into a really bad uh, argument with my mother where she started insulting my mother and um, we had to leave the house, unfortunately. So, so what you're talking about here, and I've talked about it in shows before, is so important, guys, and it's not spoke about enough when alienation. If they try to take you away from your friends, your family, I've seen it with your kids, you are headed down the wrong path because I that, didn't know this at the time. Well, and it, it, you guys, seriously, listen. If you start dating someone and they're trying to separate you, and, I, and I'll try to explain it the best I can, the narcissist wants full control. An alienator, they want control, and that's why they alienate. If they can take out these key players that might be able to come and say, Billy, what are you doing? I'm mama. You know I love you. I, do, I see what you're doing. If I can get that influence out of there, I can sink my claws even deeper into you. Total and control. I have total control mm -hmm. of you. It's a very dark thing. It's a manipulation tactic. So I had the same thing that happened to me, Billy. I mean, and to hear you talking about this and knowing, I mean, you're running a very hard race up there in New Jersey. Yeah. You know, and we got a candidate that's actually running on these issues, guys, that's been through it. This is one of the most important interviews I, I think we've done. Um, well, I, I, I certainly hope that the people that are out there um, hear this message and maybe it does change a couple of minds. I mean, especially to the family courts, you know, because one thing that I firmly believe in is like, the child has nothing to do with anything that's going on between the two parents. The child didn't ask to come to earth, right? The child right. didn't ask to hear the parents arguing and, and, and being upset with one another, right? But the courts tend to favor one party, right? That's right. Most of the yeah. time, I'd say about 80% 80, 80 of the time, it's 83. the women. 83.5. Right, mm -hmm. you know, she was given a, a lawyer that was paid for by some feminist organization that was taken care of by the state. You know, they granted her full custody of the child, and I believe the child was not abused, harmed uh, physically or, or even mentally, emotionally or in any way, there should be no reason as to why one parent should not be allowed to see the other parent. Um, 
my situation unfortunately got a little bit worse and one of I, I gotta I kinda just get a little <clears throat> um you know my, my father when when he was alive he always had the right things to say at the right time you know and same here when I was 16 he passed away you know and um I sometimes wish he was alive during those times because um I think not even I think I know for a 100% fact that if my father was alive he would have never allowed me to marry that woman my mother didn't necessarily um, it's not that she didn't agree with her but she was like hey if my son wants to be happy she wants to be happy but I know she wasn't 100% there and you know I guess women have an intuitive instinct I don't know um, but I just feel like you know maybe if I if I heard that from my father and, and not only that my father was a very big you know you know no nonsense kind of guy like I don't think he would have allowed that to happen I was 23, she was 31, she was much older than me. She knew exactly what she was doing. Right. Um, you know, I came out of the military in 2011, I actually left the military. Um, I, I, volunteer, I, I voluntarily requested to leave the military. I was given a general under honorable discharge. Um, this was during a time when Barack Obama was drawing down the, uh, the, the military size and we were bombing Libya and we were doing all kinds of things that I wanted no part of. And it was the perfect opportunity for me to say, hey, listen, I'm out of here, I'm not following any more orders. Um, if this is what you guys want me to do, so if you guys want me to go, I could go, or I could just continue to just stop following orders because I'm not, I'm not supporting this at all. And uh, you know, coming home and uh, seeing this, I, I, I think at this point, looking back at it, I was just, I guess, looking for emotional support with this person um, who had an agenda. Now, let's 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 go back to the whole homeless situation that right. that happened here, right? So you know, she gets into this whole argument. And she goes homeless, and this is after I I just quit a job at working for the New York and New Jersey Port Authority for the PATH train system. I was making really good money as a mechanic in this area. And uh, I quit this to go and start a brand new sales job. And I actually had the comfort to do this because you know I've only been in America at this point again for about six months after coming back home. I'm living with my mother, so she was like, oh, get on your feet, stack your money, you're totally fine, right? So I was like, all right, I can start a whole new career. That same day, I come home and my room Everything, my daughter's clothing, all my my, my ex-wife stuff is gone. It's just missing, and I have no idea what happened. I go upstairs and I try and call my mother and say, "Mom, what, what's going on? Where's uh, where's my ex and the uh, and, and the kids?" Only to find out that she and my mother got into a serious argument while I was at work. Like she was cleaning, like my ex was like cleaning or something, and was just ignoring the kid while the kid was like crying on the floor. And, my mother came to go and pick it up, and she started losing her mind. I'm like, yo, go pick her up. This is my kid. You know, stay out of it. I'm sick and tired of you. And just started insulting my mother. And um, when my mother started speaking back to her and basically gave her a piece of her own medicine, she packed her things and left. And didn't even call or tell me. She ended up going to one of my, my neighbor's houses with four bags of suitcases. So imagine how this looks, right? I'm in Patterson, New Jersey. It's this inner city, right? And, and living in this area, you have a you know, four foot, you know, white woman, blonde hair, blue eyes, English accent, walking around the hood with four suitcases and a, and a multi and a mixed race baby, you know, going door to door trying to find a place to stay, right? And I'm like, what on earth is going on? So my best friend calls and he tells me, he's like, hey, bro, your your ex wife was just here, bro. Like, what what, what happened, bro? Like, this isn't good. Like, you gotta go and, 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 and get her back. She's at the the McDonald's. So I go to the McDonald's on the block. They say, what's going on? What's 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 happening here? I don't understand. And she's like, oh, your, your mom started disrespecting me, so I left the house. I said, all right, we can't have that. You know, if she disrespects my wife, then, and this is before I knew what she said to my mother, right? So I'm like, all right. You know, we go back to the house, and, you know, we're having a conversation with my mother, and she starts lying. And I should have listened to my mother at the time, you know, but I believed my ex-wife with, with, with what she was telling me. And I just said, you know what, screw this. I guess, you know, we're not going to deal with it. So my mom said, all right, well, if you want to believe this nonsense after everything that I've done then you know go ahead and because you her. wanted to believe that she was she's feeling, my wife you she's wanted, my wife, you you wanted right. to love her you, you yes. was in a relationship you, you wanted this beautiful marriage and I think sometimes we make excuses for our own pain because we've yeah. got these voids to fill I, yeah. I want to kind of excuse it because I, I need that part of me and uh, yeah. it's, it's very common yeah. you know now the rabbit hole got a little bit worse. Um, yeah. yeah, after we were homeless for a while, a veterans organization, great uh, charity, Catholic Charities in Patterson, helped us get back on our feet. They helped us uh, get an apartment, land, everything. And um, at the time, I was working as a, as a salesman, as a door-to-door -door salesman at the time. 
there was a huge blizzard that happened, and it lasted. This was 2015, like early January. If you remember, it was a pretty well. You're not from New Jersey, so never mind. Yeah, but, um, I've been there but, uh, plenty of times. But it was a really bad. It was a really bad blizzard, 2015. Like for about maybe two months, you couldn't really go out and do anything. It was like just impossible. Obviously, money started running thin. You know, tensions got a little bit higher, and then one day, she just started to be very uh, cold towards me. You know, and I didn't know why she was doing this. And then one day I just kind of said, what the hell is your problem? Like, why are you being like this? I don't understand what's happening. And she told me, she laid it on me. At this point, she's pregnant with my second daughter, right? We just found out like maybe two or three months ago that our second daughter um, is about to be born. And here we are, I just got this new job, I'm losing its blizzard. So it's, tensions were quite high at the time. And I'm like, well, I don't, I don't understand why you're, why you're doing this to me. She says, listen, I don't think you get it. Like, I, I don't love you. Like, I, I don't love you, bro. Like, I. I I, I thought, you know, we were going to have a, a better life in America. And I was like, I told you, I'm, I'm from Patterson, all right? It's not, you know, large mansions in Georgia. Like, it's not a very decent place to, to raise a family. Like, I'm trying to get on my feet. We can, oh, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. I want to go back to England. If I go back to England, we can get this. We can get that. We can get that. I'm like, but I don't want to go to England. I'm an American. All right, she says, well, then F you. You're never going to see your kid again. And I was like, over my dead body? She says, well, I already spoke with my lawyer. You're not seeing your kids again. All right? And then she says, you know what? She goes to the window, opens the window, starts screaming. We lived in a, a huge multi-family apartment complex on, 30, I think it's 304 Mount Prospect in Newark. If anybody knows the area, what I'm talking about, it's a lot of apartments there. Opens up the window. Imagine, you know, short English woman out the window. Help, he's trying to kill me. He's trying to kill me. Within seconds, everybody on the floor was knocking at my door, trying to kick my door down. I'm like, what the heck are you doing? Call my mom. I said, Ma, come to the house. Like, you know, she's trying to, I don't know what she's trying to do right now, but she's trying to say that I'm killing her. So mom says, rush into the house. Police come to the home. Police have already got their guns drawn. They got their guns drawn at the house. And I said, listen, you're not coming into my apartment with your guns drawn. My ex-wife is pregnant. My daughter is only, she was about a year at this point. I was like, my, my daughter is a, is, is a baby, you know, and like, you, you cannot come in. If you guys want to come in, you have to put your guns away. It's like, oh, we just want to check on you guys, make sure everything's fine. Great. Put your guns away. Put their guns away. They open the door. They start inspecting her. They didn't want to talk to me, the police officers. Yeah. You know, they were like, listen, we need to speak with her because they're saying that something's wrong with her. And I'm like, go ahead, you can talk with her. They started asking her, like, is everything okay? She's like, yeah, 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 everything's fine. Um, I just overreacted and, and, and I freaked out. He's like, did he put his hands on you? No, 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 he didn't put his hands on me. I just, I, I, I freaked out. We were having an argument and, you know, I just, I don't know, I just felt wrong. It was at that, these points, though, that you see the bias of the system. She was innocent until proven guilty and you were guilty until proven innocent. Until Bro, she. you have no yeah. idea how many nights I cried over this, bro. Yeah. You have no idea. <sighs> Man. You know, what, what I hear you saying, too, is you, you meet this woman who s sells you this beautiful story about what she wants, and she wants this with you, but you guys, it sounds to me like there was drama at every turn, unnecessary drama that she created. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't see it that way at the time. I just kind of just saw, like, well, my friends are jerks, you know? Like, well, my mom's a jerk. Like, all you guys everybody are just jerks. Else, everybody else is trying to interfere with your happiness that you have with this yeah. woman, but she's doing all this. You, and this is, the, this is the sad part, is we talk to so many men, talk to thousands of men, and you don't see it until after the fact. Gosh, you know what? So and so told me. They told me I didn't listen. And that's the thing, you guys. If everyone in your life, everyone who loves you, is telling you this, but you're so blinded in the moment. You want this marriage to work, and you guys, men. The Bible even says, right? Men leave their household and they become one with their wife. And so we've got a great guy who is trying to do the right thing. But wanna, it takes two. I want to show you guys something because um, it gets a little bit worse. I want to kind of just show you a. Uh, a video of the living conditions that my uh, my kids are in now because in 2016 it's on my other phone in 2000 and well 2006 2015 you know after this event happens she wins custody and they grant her the ability to leave back to the United Kingdom because of something called the Bowers motion you probably figured familiar with this but the Bowers motion is basically a, a previous case that happened where they had to establish I believe one of seven reasons as to why them staying in the United States would be not beneficial for them. She didn't meet any of the standards. The only one she met was she does not want to stay in America. She wants to go back to England. And a judge says, listen, this guy and his family have said that he's willing to move to Pennsylvania to, to live with his brother. He doesn't want you to not leave. If you want to go to England, fine, but he wants the second child to be born. You know, so that the child could be a dual citizen. That's all he's asking for. It's like, I don't care. I don't want to be here. I want to go back home. And the judge says, all right, if you do, just understand that you're forfeiting your rights to alimony, you're forfeiting, 
well, you know, I want to I want to try and leave the door open to reconcile and probably speak about it. And the judge lost his mind. He said, you literally sat here for almost a week, well, for almost a month, I should say, throughout the, our, our, our court cases, talking about how you were in fear for your life, you were afraid, you don't want to be with him, you want to sleep in a couch in a roach-infested apartment with the child, rather than living in a house where he's not even going to be anywhere near, not even in the state. You want to put yourself in a circumstance, and now you're telling me you want to leave the door open to reconcile? She bursts into tears and immediately runs out of the courtroom. But that same judge gave her custody after calling He had her no own? choice. He had no choice. He no. had no choice. You think he, why did he not have a choice? Like, well, because because the thing is, like a judge can't force you to stay, right? A judge can't force you to well, do that. Well, they can, but they can say the kids aren't going. Yes, yes, they could, but then again, the child isn't hurt. And now we get into the, the, the now we get into the semantics of my body, my choice, and all that other stuff. And if she doesn't feel safe, just because you got to look at it this way, I understand the position that the judge was in. All right, I'm not saying that the judge was a horrible person because towards the end of the case, he started to understand what was going on. He saw what was happening, but he said, you know. As a judge, you got to look at it this way. Let's say something did happen to her, right? And she straight up told you she's in fear for her life, right? It's on that judge, you know? So I, 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 I can kind of sympathize with the judge in that situation. But that's just, that's the way the law has been written, which is one of the reasons why I think the laws need to be changed the way they are as they stand. They definitely do. And, you know, knowing that you understand this. You know, you're, you're one of the people, you're one of us. And yeah. that's, we need to have more of these conversations. That's why I really appreciate what you're doing with this right now and getting out and speaking. You know, you guys got some amazing candidates up there stomping grounds, trying to get some stuff going. Billy, tell everybody how they can help you out with this campaign. The way they can help me out with this campaign is, first off, standing up for, standing up for parental rights, standing up for, for the people. Um, I'm, I'm working with a group called NJ Fan Pack, who they're looking to put forth some legislation that could allow for automatic 50-50 custody in the event that there's no violence, no no harm between the children. It, it, it automatically allows 50-50 custody I know those between guys. the two. Yep. They're great people. Because here's what breaks my heart the most, and I don't, I don't talk about it much, but I feel comfortable speaking with you about it. In 2015, when she was granted custody to leave to England, the only person that I had to go through to speak with, to facilitate the meetings with my ex-wife was her former boss, who she wasn't even really on good terms with, right? right? But I had to go through her and speak with her. And every time I called to try and speak with my kids, they would interject themselves and get involved in the conversation and try and shift the narrative and and, and change the thoughts of what my kids are thinking. Like, oh, well, your father did some things, and that's why he's... And I'm like, that's not, that's not true. She tried to insert herself as the de facto grandmother of these children, right? So one day... Well, actually, after several days of her calling and telling me, like, hey, Billy, there's something going on with your kids, like your kids have been harmed, you know, we might have to call Child Protective Services, you know, just issues, like, okay, well, I'll call them myself. Oh, no, 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 Bill, 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 don't call them, everything's fine, everything's fine, don't worry about that, right? This went on for about four or five months, and so one day she told me, like, oh, your daughter got hung, like your, like your ex-wife tried to, to, like, beat her up and hang her up on the door. And, and I got this whole thing recorded on audio, the conversation that we had, you know. And the funny thing is, like, there's people in my race right now that don't know the full story of what actually happened with my family. That are saying, this guy's an abuser, yeah. he's a beater, he's do. a horrible yeah. person. But the truth is, and I have the Child Protective Services reports to prove it. In England, not even six months after my kids left and got to the country, she started bringing other men into their life, started yep. forcing the children. I have her, one of her boyfriends on audio oh, yeah. saying that this kid, I am that child's father. She doesn't want the children to know their real father, yep. but she wants other men to know who their That's father is. That's what they is, do, man. You know? That's what they then, do. On top of that, when I try to request more information about what happened to my children, the Child Protective Services in England said that, well, you're not an English citizen and we can't give you any information because if we do, it'll violate GDPR, which is like some privacy protection thing. And if we do that, it'll also bring mental stress or mental harm to the mother. And I would love to upload these kinds of things, but this is personal stuff, yeah. you know? Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it's important that that men also, because this happens to lots of men. I, I have, I've, got, I've got lots of... Yeah. Lots of friends, lots of family who, you know, they, they, they want to actually be in their kids' lives. Like, and I will continue to fight for my kids, like, till the end of time. But, uh... The more we see feminism pushed in our society... Absolutely. The more that fathers, boys, men are absolutely. starting to really face. You know, feminism, when it first started, looked for equality. We want the right to vote. We want the right to work. And all of that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'm by, I was behind feminism. Now, it's no longer about equality. It's about superiority. It's about exactly. Death, right? They you don't exactly. need a man. Uh, they, they provide no value in their child's life. And it couldn't be further from the truth. And they have this upper hand in family court. I've seen it where they can do anything they want man leave the kids at home go to bars Take a look at this oh my god oh my god oh my these are the, these are the conditions my children are living in so for the people that can't see 
right? Unclean. She just beat the crap out of my children in this video because she refuses to clean up the home. She refuses to take care of them. And she is she is speaking to the her former boss, telling her, like, oh, look what these kids are doing. The kids listen to you more than they listen to me. Look at all this. I'm I'm so under pressure because I have to clean up all this trash. They don't listen to their baby father. Oh, all this oh stuff. My oh, my God. Yeah, God. see? And I got my daughter crying. You see? But I'm the bad guy. You see? I'm the bad guy. And that's the sad thing about society right now. It's, 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 like you're saying, it's, it's, it's guilty until proven innocent. Or not even, it's like you're guilty and that's it because you're a man, you have yeah. testosterone, you're a guy, of course you did that. Well, even if you can prove your innocence off of an accusation and you find out this person was making up a lie on you, when that comes out, there's no consequence. Exactly. It's just, oh, well, no big deal. I mean, like, this woman beat my child. Hung her up on a wall. I've heard also some other nefarious things that happened to my younger daughter that I don't want to discuss on camera. But Child Protective Services gave the children back to her. Yep. And they cut me out of the case. You're not an English citizen, so you don't need to know. I come to the American courts. Listen, this, these, here are the documents. This is what's happening to my kids. Well, they're not in our jurisdiction. They've been over there for more than seven well, years. See, There's nothing we can do about I, it. I do take issue with the judge on your case. Uh, I take it well, because... this was a different judge at this point. At okay. this point, it's a whole new judge. Well, but the first judge. Yeah. You had we went a daughter... through three judges at this point. You had a daughter who was already here, who was born. The court had jurisdiction. If he had an inclination that this mom is lying, this mom is trying to work the system, that judge could have said, you know what? You can go to England, mom, but the child's staying here. Could have done that, and he did. So, And let's be honest, that's more often than not that it is yes. that situation. Yeah. But again, the society, the narrative that's has right. made it act like it doesn't exist. Right. You know, we're fighting that's why, that's, war, and that's, that, that's why I want to change that because right now, now more than ever, especially in the African American community, we especially need fathers. We, yes. do, we need man. fathers. We need strong men like me. I'm blessed. I am so, so, so blessed. Thank God for the father that I had. You know what I mean? He wasn't a perfect man, but he worked hard. He still he had great morals. He had great values, and he instilled <clears throat> he instilled a lot of this stuff in me. You know, and. I, 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 I fear for my future because today there's not enough men that even know how to be men or want to be men. I know so many deadbeats that don't want to be fathers. That's I want right. nothing to do with their kids. And like then you have guys like myself, many other men that want to actually be fathers. But the prospect of money from the government, because the government yeah. is the new father now. Yeah. It is. Yeah, that is far right. more better for them than even trying to work it out. Or even not, you don't even have to work it out, but at least be civil for the sake of the children. Right. It's got nothing to do with you or I. You hate me? Fine. I love the kid. I know you love the kid. Or I hope you love the kid. But it's got nothing to do with that. These are our children, right? You know, you, she, she... Let me say this, you guys. Let me interject right here. Is that there's a lot of women that follow. There's second wives. There's girlfriends. There's mamas. There's sisters that follow it. Here's the thing is that we as women have to start speaking up too. People say, well, yeah. people ask me, why are you doing this? Like, you'll never lose your kids. Well, I have a son. I have a father. That happened to you, by the way. Yeah. So here's the thing. Here we have a guy who's pouring out his heart and his soul. He's telling the story. He's showing pictures. We need to get behind him. The conservative women, especially, because we're conservative function right now, raise your voice and speak up. There's a guy right here that's showing you pictures. Everybody pictures, needs to speak video, up. audio, Everybody. documents, but the, it's speak easier to up. believe the lie. It's it easier is. to believe the lie because Until it, comes to your it front sells, door. right? Until it comes to your there's, front there's, door. there's, there's people who, who, who think they're some kind of domestic violence advocate. Yeah, so like, yeah, exactly. we're pro women. We support women. Yet they're the biggest bigots in the world, right? Yeah, and I'm talking right, about a very right. specific someone that's uh, trying to tear me down, right? Who doesn't have the facts, <laughs> but wants to spend all their time trying to tear me apart, trying to trying to tear down my donors, trying to trying to wreck my prospects because they don't want me to win for other reasons, right? Yeah, that we're yeah. not going to get into on this show. Politics. Yeah. Politics. I think that's a good answer right there for political reasons. Politics why is they're the biggest doing this. enemy of families and children. They don't want a guy like me to win. That's right. They don't want a guy like me that's going to call out the nonsense, that's going to call it for what it is and actually stand up for something. They want a guy who's already there, 24-year incumbent. A he's a puppet. He's not, well, not even a puppet because he knows what he's doing. But he's got a huge framework of everybody on both sides in his back pocket. But he's keeping everybody else happy. Of course. So let's be honest. You guys aren't only fighting the left, but you guys that are actually out there wanting to do the right thing, you're fighting the establishment in your own party. You have to. And I would say the establishment because there's a lot of great conservatives. I wouldn't say that it's the conservatives, but it's like the quote unquote political operatives, the career the leaders, politicians. the career politicians. Yep. That's, That's what I call systemic political corruption. It's something that I that I coined. People that 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 stick around in this process. They think that, oh I've got this title, I know this person, I know that guy. I can I can I'll call you and talk about how I'm gonna tear you down if you don't do it this way. 
right? I'm gonna I'm gonna drag you through the mud and make up nonsense because you know I I, I don't want you to win because you're gonna mess this up for me and all of my friends. And the unfortunate part is a lot of them do have that power. Not for not over a guy like me. I'm gonna talk no, about that's it. You know right. what I mean? You I'm gonna talk about up. it. You know, it's like if you want to scare me, go ahead and scare me. Like there's not a single thing that I haven't said that nobody already knows. That's it. All right. And if you want to go out there and use that to tear me down, like I I I just hope that for all the men that are going out there, even mothers, because mothers go through this kind of stuff as well too, man. They do. But it's like, but so I should say, parents, you know, that are dealing with this parental alienation thing, you're not alone. All right. I've been in some of the darkest corners of my mind where, you know, bad thoughts come into your mind. You know. And I'm glad I overcame that. And, and whatever you're going through, I want to tell you to, to, to stay strong. Don't be afraid to speak up. Stand up. Your kids love you. And at some point, your kids are going to come and find you. They're going to look for the truth. And it's going to be, it's going to be irreversible, the damage that they've, that they've done to the relationship. But the good news is this. When they know the truth, there's nothing that can overcome the truth. Pray to God. Stay close to God. And good things will happen. Your children will find you. And I know one day my children will find me. I can tell you guys 100% Dad Talk Today is by Billy Primpa and every single one of you guys. Let's make sure we get the word out there. Billy, tell them how, where they can donate, where they can contribute. If they can knock on doors, if they can call some phones, tell them how they can help you. Thank you. If you if you guys would like to help the campaign, the best thing you can do is spreading the word. If you have it within you to donate, please, please, please donate because I'm going up against the machine right now to try and fight this fight. You can go to BillyPrempa.com. I'm also on social media. Just type Billy Prempa and spread the word. Tell people. Spread the word. And let's try and flip this district. And let's speak out on behalf of all fathers and all mothers all across the country that are going through this exact same issue. It's a pandemic. It's time we put it to an end. Yeah, thank you, brother. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah, man. We're going to get this. Thank, thank you. you. Hey everybody, Eric Carroll here. Thank you for tuning in to another exciting episode of Dad Talk Today. While we fight for you, we would ask for you to please help fight for us. Like, subscribe to our channel, and ring that bell so you get notifications every time we go live. There's also Super Chats, patreon.com slash dadtalktoday, and other ways you can support our channel. Thank you for being here, and we will see you next time.